First story. Hey guys, I'm the kids from one of those online happy living RV families, and let me tell you, I effing hate this and am cutting ties with my entitled parents, who used me as a constant and forced me into their lifestyle without any consent and made my life as miserable as possible for their own good. My parents decided when I was only around 7 years old far too young to get an opinion on anything to pack us up and move into an RV to travel around the US. My dad works online, and my mom makes content online. She's not huge by any means, but big enough that we get recognized sometimes and big enough that I've had a camera shoved in my face for as long as I can remember. For my privacy's sake, I won't say anything else on that. And I'm using a throwaway account, because I've gotten enough attention already, and I'm sick of it. I sleep in a tiny bunk bed that I outgrew years ago. And the other bunk is the only space I have to put anything I own. I don't even have a room, just a curtain, and thank God I'm an only child, or else I would have to share the small space I have already. I was homeschooled for most of my education, and then switched to online school at my own insistence for high school. I'm an 18-year-old girl. I don't have a single friend in person because the longest I've ever stayed anywhere is a month. I don't have a job and no way to get one because of not being stationary unless I find one online, which also means I have no way to move out and get away from them. I've had conversations with them about all of this countless times, and they are so delusional and genuinely believe that a nomadic existence is the best way to live, so why would I never need anything else? I hate them for treating me like some pet. They can just drag along in their plans, rather than their child. I hate traveling, I don't like heat, I hate dealing with bugs, and I'm so sick of hiking. I can't wait for the day that I finally figure out a way to get away from them with their morning hikes and cameras in my face. I've traveled around the US, yeah, but god forbid I want to have a normal life, go to college, or maybe even make some friends. That's asking too much. Some of OP's comments. Commenter. I can't even imagine how lonely that must be. Do you have any other family you could go stay with? OP. Not that I know of, unfortunately. Currently my plan is to try to figure out some sort of income online and save up so I can get an apartment. And I'm talking with someone I've known online for a long time about maybe being roommates to help with costs for both of us. Commenter. Going to college is perhaps the easiest way out, but maybe not the cheapest. However, certainly a good step forward, for multiple reasons. OP. I'm definitely looking into it, but I'm worried about it because, with the way I was homeschooled, I was very behind academically and struggled a lot in high school. I was just happy I was able to do an actual online high school program rather than homeschool. Commenter. Ironically, if you were to start creating content about getting away from your hipster parents, you'd probably gain a lot of attention. OP honestly, I've considered it just for the purpose of spreading awareness, but it didn't seem smart to me for a few reasons. First, it didn't seem like a long-term solution. I don't think the content would be all that interesting once my story is told. There isn't any other real content there. There are only so many times you can talk about the same thing without it getting repetitive and boring. Plus, I would have to be in a stable position enough to feel comfortable talking about it and have an out just in case things went sideways. But more importantly, I've already had my life plastered onto the internet from such a young age that I don't think it's worth giving up the one aspect of my life that hasn't been published publicly. Top comment. Gumbirox. 1800 Runaway provides a list of programs that will provide housing and supportive services. We help people like you every day. Update post. Nine days later. Hello, barely over a week ago, I made a post talking about my very negative experience, living in an RV with my parents for around 10 years now. Despite it being such a short time since I've posted it, a lot has changed for me since then. I don't know how many people here would be interested in an update on my situation, but I know quite a few people were very concerned and would probably appreciate an update. So here it is. Also, fair warning. This is a fairly lengthy post. I have a tendency to ramble. So there is sort of a TLR at the end. I had a lot of people give me really helpful advice and resources, as well as even offers to try to help personally. Some being questionable admittedly, but a majority being genuinely concerned and wanting to try to help. And I very much appreciate that. It was slightly overwhelming to be honest, and I ended up not responding to a lot of people. So you'll all have to forgive me for that. But even if I didn't respond much, I have been doing research on a lot of the information people gave me. Something that stood out to me was people asking if I had any family I could stay with, to which I had to respond. Not that I know of, because I don't have anyone on my dad's side of the family, and my mom strictly has no contact with her family. I did not know if they were alive, if they cut her off, if she cut them off, or even any details about them, and my mom had never wanted to talk about it. 
What information I did have was my mom's maiden name, which is pretty uncommon, and where she was born, which in terms of trying to find family can actually get you surprisingly far. I've come to realize. I've always had a slight hatred for the internet, because I never had any choice in my life being public knowledge. And I know that once something is out there, it's out there. But for the first time, I'm actually really grateful for the internet. I was able to find some information on my mother's side of the family, and specifically was able to find my grandma's Facebook account. Though it did take me some effort. After a lot of stressing on how to approach messaging her, if I even should, as well as potential outcomes, I messaged her explaining my mom's life, who I was, and my situation. I won't go into details on why my grandma and my mom are in no contact, because that is not my story to share. But my grandma was appalled that she has a granddaughter she didn't even know about. And even more so the way in which her daughter raised me. I found out I have an aunt and an uncle, both of whom my grandma told them about me and my situation. I've been in pretty much constant contact with all of them since just learning about each other. All of them want to help me get out of this living situation with my parents. And luckily, with me being 18 now, it's actually possible. Again, I don't feel entirely comfortable going into details, but I have arrangements to go stay with my aunt, who lives in a big city on the west coast that had a lot of potential opportunities for me to start college or whatever I see fit which I do plan on figuring out college, happy to announce. My uncle has kids, but my aunt lives on her own and has a spare bedroom, which she has no problem letting me stay in for as long as necessary. I have a train ticket scheduled and purchased by my aunt and enough money to get to the station. I'm talking with my family, it still feels weird to type currently, and trying to plan out the details, like how or if I'm going to tell my parents. My mom doesn't know any information on where any of her family lives, so even if I were to tell my parents who I'm going to live with, they wouldn't know where I was specifically. Someone pointed out that if I did leave without telling them, I should leave a note or some form of proof that I left willingly. So if I do opt out of a conversation, I'm planning on either leaving a note or filming a video explaining my plans and why I'm leaving. Which would be kind of ironic, wouldn't it? Regarding my mom filming, I've been very quiet around my parents, just refusing to talk when the camera is on. But neither one of them has mentioned it yet so far, luckily. Also speaking of my mom's content, I would like to very much emphasize something quickly. Almost everyone was genuinely trying to help, but I had a few people replying, trying to guess who I was luckily the few I saw were basically torn to shreds and ended up deleting their comments. I also had a few people who messaged me privately trying to make a guess at who I am, which at least that's not public, I guess. Although I can understand being curious, I posted anonymously with very little personal information for a reason. As I stated in my previous post, I have gotten enough attention, and I'm very sick of it. I would very much appreciate it if you guys could respect that. Even if you think you might know who I am, please, please don't make public guesses and understand that I don't want this to be even more public information tied to my name. Very long story short. I have set plans to leave as well as a safe place to go with my aunt once I do. And I very much appreciate people for being so willing to help. If you had told me not even two weeks ago that not only would I have a plan to move away from my parents, but contact with family members I didn't even know existed, I don't think I would have believed it. I'm currently not planning on making another post updating this, but wanted to let anyone who is concerned about me to not worry. Genuinely, thank you. Some of OP's comments. Commenter. Be careful. You don't really know your mom's family. I know it seems like an out. Just be careful. OP, I absolutely will be. Why my mom isn't in contact with them makes total sense. And none of it was their fault. Plus they were able to send me evidence of that. But despite that, I definitely don't know them personally yet. My train out isn't scheduled immediately or anything. And I'm going to continue talking with them until then. But they do seem to be genuinely concerned and trustworthy. Plus, my aunt who I'll be staying with, seems super nice, and we have already figured out that we have certain things in common. To the same commenter a bit later. OP, oh, I forgot to mention earlier. As I said in the post, I'm planning on going to college, because that's a more attainable option for me now. And I'm hoping to figure out living in dorms so realistically, I won't be staying with my aunt for that long once I work that out. Commenter. You can't really know they're being truthful. You should ask your mother why she's stopped communicating with them without telling her you started and get her side of the story. OP, my mom, like 100%, refuses to talk about her family. That's the reason I didn't have any contact with them in the first place and didn't even know about my aunt and uncle. But I'm confident they are being truthful about it because I was literally shown proof, and some of it was literally court-ordered. Commenter, I do not recommend making a video. 
Your parents will use it for content. Write a note at most. Keep it simple though. OP. I realistically don't plan on filming a video. I think I was just feeling petty and upset thinking about it all. Which just led to thinking about drastic ideas of what I should do for telling my parents. Video definitely isn't a good idea if I don't just tell them myself. To a downvoted commenter. OP question. Have you ever seen the Harry Potter movie scene where his room is under the stairs and thought to yourself, wow, he actually has enough room to sit up in bed and a door. I have multiple times, actually. I'm very willing to abandon them to not have to feel like that anymore. Commenter. Haha, -ha, great analogy. Listen, could you do me a favor, please? Whatever the name of the town you're going to, call the local police or sheriff station on a non-emergency number. Ask for the community liaison officer and then briefly introduce yourself. Explain that you are 18, leaving a family situation that is not healthy, and going to stay with a relative you have not previously met. Give the officer your contact info, and tell him or her that you just want somebody that you trust to know where you are, and to please give you a wellness check in a couple of weeks, and that you will stop in and let them know how you are a couple of weeks following that. Agree on two innocent code words for your wellness future conversations. One, which, when dropped into conversation, means something is wrong, please get me out of here, and the other, which means everything is just fine at present. Does this sound comfortable for you? OP, that's a really good idea, actually. Thank you. Second story. My entitled boyfriend humiliated me in front of his whole family after I cooked for them, so I walked out. Now he blames me for embarrassing him and ruining the day. I 26F have been with my boyfriend 28M for about a year now. We get along well most of the time. But something happened last weekend that's really been bothering me. We went over to his parents' house for dinner, and ever since, things have been awkward. A bit of backstory. I love cooking. I'm not a professional by any means, but it's something I'm passionate about and take pride in. My boyfriend knows this, but he's constantly comparing my cooking to his mom's, especially when it comes to her lasagna. I've heard about this lasagna more times than I can count. So before we leave for his parents' house, he makes this offhand comment. Maybe you'll finally learn how to make lasagna properly tonight. Yours could definitely use some improvement. I tried to laugh it off, but honestly, it hurt my feelings. Still, I brushed it aside because I didn't want to start anything before dinner. We get to his parents' place, and as expected, his mom's lasagna is the star of the meal. Everyone is raving about it, and of course, my boyfriend jumps in to say, Oh man, this is real lasagna. OP tried making it once. But let's just say there's a reason we're all here eating my mom's tonight. Everyone laughed. I felt embarrassed, but kept smiling to avoid making things awkward. Then he kept going, saying that I burned the sauce I didn't, and that maybe I should just leave lasagna to the experts. His family was cracking up, and I sat there, trying not to lose it. It wasn't just a joke to me, it felt like he was putting me down, especially in front of his family, who I'm still trying to make a good impression with. I couldn't handle it anymore. So I excused myself from the table and went to sit in the car. A few minutes later, my boyfriend comes out, looking confused, and asks why I left. I told him how hurt I was by his comments, and instead of apologizing, he said I was overreacting, and that it was just a joke. He said I need to stop being so sensitive and learn to take a joke, especially around his family. I was upset, and told him that if he thought embarrassing me in front of his family was funny, maybe he should just date his mom's cooking instead. Now that didn't go over well. He got angry and accused me of ruining the night. Since then, we've barely spoken, and he's waiting for me to apologize. But I feel like he should be the one apologizing. So now I'm wondering, did I take it too far? Was I being overly sensitive? Or was I right to walk out after being embarrassed like that? Ada. Update. First of all, I want to thank everyone for your comments and support. I was not expecting such a huge response and I was really overwhelmed by how many of you took the time to share your thoughts. I have been reading through everything, and I appreciate all the advice. So here is the update. After the dinner, things were awkward between my boyfriend and me for a few days. We barely talked, but I knew I could not just let it go. I sat him down and told him how much his comment about my cooking, especially comparing it to his mom's, hurt me. I love cooking, and I put a lot of effort into it. So hearing him constantly bring up his mom's lasagna felt like he was saying mine was not good enough. He seemed genuinely surprised and said he did not realize how much it bothered me. He thought he was just teasing and that I knew he was not serious. I explained that while I can take jokes, this felt different because it happened in front of his family 
and made me feel really small. He apologized right away and said he would stop making those comparisons. I could tell he was truly sorry, which made me feel better. As for his family, I did apologize for walking out, and they were actually really understanding. His mom even mentioned she would love to try my lasagna, sometime with no comparisons, which was really kind of her. Things have been better since then. My boyfriend has been more thoughtful about how he talks about my cooking, and I feel like we have both learned something from this. It is not perfect, but I feel hopeful about where things are going. Thank you all again for the support and advice. It gave me the confidence to speak up, and I am so grateful for that. Comments SMK122588 He seemed genuinely surprised and said he did not realize how much it bothered me. Even after you walked out of the dinner and he had to come find you upset in the car. After he accused you of ruining the night because of how noticeably upset you were to everyone. He didn't realize you were bothered. This doesn't make any sense. Please think about that. I'm all for the rare happy ending on Reddit. But what he's saying simply does not make sense. He's had a few days to compose the reaction that he knows you want to get yourself out of hot water. And you're just eating it up. Demiradamsel 122. I still don't like his initial reaction when you made your feelings known. And I don't accept his excuse that he thought you knew he wasn't being serious. The things he was saying lying about you burning the sauce. All of it were just objectively mean and no one's idea of a joke. I'm glad you feel better about it, but if it were me, I would take a wait and see approach. Third story. OP was sod, and everyone blames her because why did she, a girl, get drunk, be at that place and at that time? I know that by looking at the title, it sounds horrible, but hear me out. I'm 22, and my 23-year-old boyfriend has been together for two years. He's my everything, and I would never have thought that things would end like this. We were having some problems with communication, but nothing that didn't get resolved the same day. Recently, my little brother 17 wanted to go to a music festival, and since I have gone to plenty of them, I offered to take him to the festival. We bought a tour to the city where the festival was going to be, and off we went to plenty of them. I offered to take him to the festival. We bought a tour to the city where the festival was going to be, and off we went. The first day was amazing, and honestly, both my brother and I were super tired after it. While waiting for the tour bus to take us to the hotel, a guy approached us and introduced himself to us. He was 27 and very interested in me and my brother's music interests. We thought it was normal since he was a little tipsy, but overall a very nice guy since he gave my brother a lot of good festival tricks and tips. We ended up exchanging numbers, and that was it. The next day he called me to tell me that he and his siblings were very close to the scenario where the artist that I liked was going to play and that we were welcome to be there. My brother and I decided it was a good idea since we could see the artist better and closer. But by waking there, my brother twisted his ankle and couldn't continue. So he went to sit on a bench and told me to record the concert for him since we couldn't even stand. I gave him money and told him not to move from where he was. He assured me he was going to be fine. And I went to meet the guy and his siblings close to the scenario. Before the festival I had already decided to not drink alcohol since it was my responsibility to take care of my brother so I was only drinking soda and water. The guy and his siblings were nice, and I was having a good time waiting for the artist to come out. I ordered a soda to drink, and at one point, I remember it tasting it weird, but I thought it was because it was hot, and I was very thirsty. Time went out, and I was texting my brother constantly. At one point I remember I started to slurred my words, and my head was pounding very hard. But I thought it was heat exhaustion. I started to lose control over my body, and the guy told me to recline on him. At one point I passed out. When I woke up I saw the guy on top of me kissing me and sang me. I wanted to scream to kick him to do something, but I couldn't move. When he finished he left me there unconscious and terrified until I slowly recovered control. The first thing I did was look for my brother, and when I found him he told me that if I was going to get drunk at least tell him so he can take care of me. I decided to not tell him anything to avoid making him feel bad. But in my head, the only thing I was thinking was that I cheated on my BF. It has been a few days since it and I couldn't find the courage to tell anybody except for my therapist. She has been telling me that it wasn't cheating I was R-worded, but I can't bring myself to be looking at my BF and knowing everything. And I know that if I told him what happened he would question everything, and to some point also he would believe I cheated, and it would break his heart. Some insight would be appreciated. Comments Mountain underscore monitor underscore 262 You did not cheat. You were drugged and sawed against your will. Are you in a safe country? You must tell your brother what happened. He needs to help go to the police to report it and take you to the hospital. You will need to tell your BF. 
but you can have your brother nearby for support. Update in the comments. Hi guys, first of all, thank you all for your support and kind messages. They really mean the world to me. This is kind of like an update, but not a very positive one. Things just got so much more intense and awful. It turns out that this guy took pictures of me naked while I was unconscious, and he has been threatening me to publish them. Unfortunately, we do believe the phone number he gave my brother and me was a burner phone. I have told my family and my little brother is absolutely destroyed. He believes that if he was with me that guy wouldn't have done it. He thinks it's his fault. I have assured him that is not his fault. But he has been very sad and angry. A lot of you asked me if I was in a safe country. But unfortunately my country has a history of saw cases going under the radar and not getting justice. I have already done the police report. But they basically told me that it was my fault because in music festivals, it's very common for people to do drugs. And they even implied that I was lying and that I must have took some recreational drugs and just cannot remember what happened. They basically threw my case in the trash can. I have been working up the courage to tell my boyfriend what happened. He's concerned because I have been very distant and sad. But I just cannot find the words to tell him. I have been working with my therapist. And even though a lot of things are happening, therapy is going well. If anything happens, I will update. Once again, thank you all for all your kind words and support messages. It feels awesome to know that people listened to me and supported me. Update. Also to answer some questions that I've been seeing a lot, because I already saw my story on TikTok. First of all, I did not ditch my brother to see this guy. When my brother twisted his ankle, we walked to a nearby bench so he could sit down. I told him that we could watch the concert from the bench, but he insisted that I go with the guy and his siblings because he knew how much I liked the band that was playing. I would never ditch my brother in any kind of situation. Also, I was in constant communication with him, texting him and calling him to see if he was alright. Second, a lot of people have been telling me why did I gave my number to this guy. And the reality it's that both me, my brother, and the guy ended up exchanging numbers. Because we talked about the artist that we were going to see the next day and talked about getting to the front of the crowd. He told us that his siblings and him were going to arrive earlier to the festival to secure their place in the crowd and maybe be at the front of it. My brother told him that it would be cool if he called us if he had a good place in the crowd, so we would see the artist up close. He agreed and told us the same. That if the case was that me and my brother had a better place in the crowd, we would text him so he and his siblings could come there and see the artist better. I would never gave him my number in any other scenario. Third, I was also in constant communication with my boyfriend during the festival, telling him everything, sending him videos, and texting him. I even told him that me and my brother made a new friend the guy, and that he was nice to us. Fourth, I did not notice or knew that his guy was interested in me. He was interested in music and bands. That's how he approached my brother and me. If I in any way knew that he was romantically or sexually interested in me, I wouldn't even let him speak to me. But he made small talk with us, asking about music, bands, and artists. Also, there has been a lot of confusion about where we met this guy. We met him during the first day of the festival and ended up saying that in the case of him and his siblings having a better view in the crowd, both my brother and I would go there. I didn't meet him before the festival and made plans with him. Also, my boyfriend was supposed to come with us. But his work didn't let him. So it was me and my brother. Unfortunately, I don't remember if he used a condom or not. I have already scheduled a STD panel in my health clinic. And I also scheduled a blood pregnancy test, so I can be more calm on that. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.